Good morning, or is it afternoon or evening, as you're listening to me in Mongolia? Fellow CEOs, it's a great pleasure and privilege to speak to you. And I'm very pleased to hear that the banks in Mongolia are keen to look at the issue of sustainable banking very seriously. In Nigeria, this is a journey we embarked on in 2011. We took the first step in September, and I've taken several more steps since. And our industry is much better for it. I hope that as you brainstorm, just as we did in 2011, you reach an agreement collectively that you will collaborate to change the very way and manner that Mongolian banks intervene in your economy to ensure that as banks, you influence the conduct of your borrowers, and as banks, you make sure that even your conduct in economic activities is expressed in a sustainable fashion. The Nigerian sustainable banking principles are closely linked with Access Bank's journey towards sustainability. At Access Bank, we resolved to conduct our, ourselves and our business around principles that would ensure that we were built to last, built to last for the very long term, way beyond this set of executives and generations of executives to come. And as we thought more and more about what type of life should a corporate organization live, it led us to think about triple bottom line ideas beyond profits towards people and our planet. And as we developed these thoughts and these processes, we found that as much progress as we made as one institution, as a sole institution, this oasis of sustainable sanity, if you like, uh, in Nigeria, we found that you know, this was a journey that you couldn't make on your own. The journey towards sustainability is very much like climbing a slippery mountain. And you don't climb mountains on your own unless you are very brave. And so we needed to form a group, a group of banks, a coalition, if you like, of like-minded institutions that would pursue the issue of sustainability. And we reached out for help to our partners, the FMO for one. And in our brainstorming, we came up on the idea of let's you know, convene all the banks in Nigeria. And we convened around the, Nigerian, the inaugural Nigerian Sustainable Banking Week, which took place in September 2011. The high point of that week was a CEO roundtable. And surprise, surprise, our surprise visitor was the governor of the central bank himself, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi. And for eight hours, we shared thoughts, ideas, we brainstormed. Not much argument, but it was really, really enthralling. And at the end of the day, we came up with an agreement that we would sign up to a set of principles that would govern not just how we acted as banks, but also our lending and our financing activities. We agreed to form a strategic work group that would assist us in evolving and recommending principles and policies for adoption by all the bank CEOs and, of course, the central bank. That's where we started from. One of the greatest factors or constraints that would prevent institutions from embracing sustainability is the whole idea of if I do it and others don't. In other words, if the, le if the playing field is not level, how am I sure that I won't be shooting myself in the foot? How am I sure that I won't be disadvantaged as I, cease to op as I seek to operate by principles that others do not share? So we agreed at that joint CEO meeting that we would jointly issue a statement showing our commitment to these principles. And then the central bank went a bit further. The central bank said, beyond commitment, we would set a baseline level of standards as a matter of regulatory policy that all banks would be required to subscribe to. But probably the most powerful 
thing that we did was that to ensure that no bank felt at a disadvantage to the other banks was a, a joint investment in capacity building at all levels of banks. We brought in the IFC, we brought in the FMO, we brought in consultants, very much practiced in, in the field. And we have exposed all the banks, both at the board and at the management level, to the concepts of, of sustainability. And what this has done is that we all play by the same rules, and hopefully it reinforces our desire to live by those rules. It's good to have a central bank governor who is passionate about sustainable banking issues, issues of the community, issues of impact. And the central bank has been very key in our journey as an industry towards sustainability. I think the first thing is that the central bank entered into the process as a partner, a partner that was willing to learn and a partner that was willing to basically put its money where its mouth was, so to speak. And it has moved from being a partner, interestingly, to being a leader. The central bank has appointed a senior advisor to the governor's office on sustainability issues and has embarked on a wide range of different initiatives around diversity, around its environmental footprint, and so on. And very quickly, we find that some of us who started ahead of the central bank uh, are, are running you know, hard you know, to, make, you know, to make sure that we keep up. But of course, I think the most unique thing was the central bank's decision to create standards, uniform standards for adoption for all banks, and to ensure that through the banking supervision department, it would enforce compliance. When it came to the issue of how banks lent money, how banks financed its customers, and what we had to do to ensure that lending and financing was conducted in a responsible way. The obvious issue was that there are so many sectors in a country with such a large economy and quite a wide demographic profile. So we had to prioritize and focus on certain aspects of economic conduct to ensure that we didn't try and cast our, our net so wide and catch nothing. And we came up with three areas of focus, agriculture, oil and gas, and power. You may ask why agriculture? Simply put, is the largest employer of labor in Nigeria. Probably also as important is that it's the greatest contributor to GDP. And then finally, agriculture by its very nature impacts the planet. So the environment is an obvious area for concern. The other or next area that we picked was oil and gas. And in this case, beyond the economic contribution of the oil and gas sector, the environmental and social conduct of players in the oil and gas sector in Nigeria has been far from satisfactory. And I'm sure you all know that. It's an extractive uh, sector that is doing a lot of damage and has indeed done a lot of damage uh, to uh, the environment and probably also as important social issues. And so we felt this was one sector that we could not afford to ignore. And the final, power. And if you know Nigeria, many of you say or would ask, well, uh, you don't generate that much power. But the reality is that the banking industry has been pushing for significant reform in the power sector on the understanding and with the promise that if the government did its bit, the banks would finance the investment. And so there is a large infusion of funds going into the power sector. And we felt that it would be necessary that we would, in a sense, regulate ourselves and make sure that we lent in a responsible way to people who approach power from a responsible perspective. It's interesting that, I mean, when you embark on sustainable banking, you want to make sure it's sustainable. And one thing that the CEOs of the Nigerian banks were concerned about was, yes, we've come together. Yes, individually we have keyed in, and we're going to get organizations to back this movement. What do we do to make sure that we sustain it? 
And the first thing, of course, was that success has many friends. And we recognized that if we implemented these principles successfully, we stood the greatest chance that they would be sustained. To implement the principles in a successful manner, we recognized that buy-in at the board level was fundamental. So we agreed that all CEOs would, within a certain period, make presentations to their boards in such a manner that the boards would, on their own, adopt at the individual bank level these principles. And that each bank would design its own statement of adoption to show and to signal that it was ready to take these principles seriously. Every bank also uh, appointed a champion at the minimum or champions. And these champions have first, if you like, uh, first uh, point of access to the common pool of training that we have created, mentoring opportunities from institutions and countries that lead in sustainability and so on. And these champions are meant to drive sustainability within each organization. At the risk management level, we also agreed that our chief risk officers would have to be, I wouldn't use the word champions, but would have to be experts on the issue of sustainability, particularly as regards environmental and social risk issues. Finally, we have tried to phase our implementation in such a manner that we don't try to take on too much too soon. So these are not little bites. These are sizable bites. But we are doing it in a manner that would not choke the industry. Together, we believe confidently that we will successfully implement Nigeria's sustainable banking principles. I wish you wonderful deliberations. My name is Aigbuji Aig Imokwede.